Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wants. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Scythe, a megawad by Eric Alm released in 2003. Its 32 maps are grouped into three episodes which are distinguished from each other by level of difficulty rather than by theme. Episode 1 is aimed at new or casual players, episode 2 is for proficient players, and episode 3 is for experts only. Scythe's levels are notable for their compact layouts and low monster counts. In the author's own words, he focuses on small, fun maps to blast through without much thought about defense. Though often overshadowed by its sequel, Scythe 2, which is arguably one of the most influential p of its era, Scythe is still one of the classics, and the gameplay in its final episode holds up especially well to modern scrutiny. Well, mostly. You'll see. Before we dive in, here's how the show works. We give each level on the wand two grades, one for quality and one for difficulty. We grade quality from A to F and difficulty from X to E, X for extreme, E for easy, and A through D in between. A grade A level is fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Lower grades indicate the level lacks some or all of these qualities. Bear in mind that I'm little more than a doom pleb, and these reviews reflect only my opinions, so our definitions of difficulty and great map design will surely differ. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is really about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. For the new viewers in the audience, here are the rules. 1. We play on ultraviolence. 2. We play each level from a pistol start. 3. In order to review the wad, I must have played it at least twice. 4. Saves are allowed, but discouraged. And 5. I go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions in cases where it's just not worth it. I play on Z-Doom, with compatibility settings on strict. Now, to the wad. Map 1. Get going. Imps, zombies, chainsaw. Enough said. Even for an opening level, get going is short, easy, and totally forgettable. You can beat it in less than a minute. Grade D. Difficulty E. Map 2. Punchline. Knee deep in the dead, but with Berserk. Shotgun not included. I don't think I've ever played a megawad that withheld the shotgun beyond the first map, but I can't say I missed it. Experienced doomers will be able to beat this one semi-conscious. Don't forget about the two Romero-esque secrets. One in the poison, one outside. Grade C. Difficulty E. Map 3. Up and around. Hey, there's the shotgun. Up and around is about as big, green, and threatening as a miniature golf course, and outside of this imp ambush in the dark, possesses no distinctive fights or architecture to speak of. Grade D+. Difficulty E. Map 4. Lost Warehouse. Unlike the first three maps, Lost Warehouse actually has a chance to stick in your memory despite its diminutive playtime. Baby mode is still fully engaged, but the extra attention paid to the lighting is welcome, especially this neat little strobe sequence in the opening room. Grade C+. Difficulty E. I know, right? Four E's in a row. Map 5. Slimy Tunnels. Okay, this one actually managed to kill me. I'm embarrassed, but I'm also man enough to admit it. This map introduces the chain gun to your arsenal, and by proxy the chain gunner. But don't worry, Eric Alm does not take after the Plutonius school of hitscanner placement, and goes light on chain gunners throughout the megawad. Slimy tunnels is the first inkling of challenge you'll get out of Scythe, but if you budget your rad suits, you'll still clear it easily. Grade C, difficulty D-. Map 6, Pressure Point. Alright, onto the first map in Scythe I actually like. Jib some imps, grab some guns, and hit the switch to raise a bridge to the second half of the level, where you'll encounter some shotgunners, hell knights, and a rocket launcher, but save that. You'll need it for this room. Check it out. Four cacos, two hell knights, and explosive barrels too close for comfort. Fall in the lava pit and you're dead. It's a pointed warning that Scythe could be going a lot harder on the player, but chooses not to. The TNT music is definitely a factor, but I like pressure point. Grade, B-, minus. difficulty, D. Map 7, Deadly. This is, uh, not the best dead simple replacement. It's tiny, tan, and mindless. Snipe the Mancubi from out here, then duck inside when the Arachnotrons show up, fire off some rockets and triplets, and eventually it'll be safe enough to step out of your comfort zone and clear out the rest. Probably one of the lowest effort maps in the Megawad. Grade, D-, difficulty, D-. Map 8, Garden Base. Alm starts to put the pieces together combat-wise in Garden Base, throwing a few Hell Knights, Mancubi, and a Chain Gunner ambush at you, telegraphing the incoming difficulty hike without actually slowing the player down. Visually, it's a mishmash of Doom 2's The Waste Tunnels and TNT Evolution's Map 10, whose music Alm borrowed for his title screen and map 5. Not exactly a winning combination. Side note, Scythe's secrets are obligatory at best. Exhibit A, this random wall hiding two specters, a berserk, and a soul sphere if you step through this random doorway teleporter. All in all, Garden Base is a neutral experience. Like retail doom, but more conservative. Grade C, difficulty D-. Map 9, Computer Storage. The penultimate map in Scythe's first episode plays a lot like E1M7. You got demons on the prey for a midi, groups of hit scanners and imps, conveniently placed explosive barrels, monster closets that open in other rooms when you grab keys, computer storage, computer station, come on. It even shares a lot of E1's texturing habits, though Alm's choices feel a bit more slapadash than Romero's. I like the freedom you have to run and gun here, but this map is even easier than the end of Knee Deep in the Dead, and not quite as worthy of respect. Grade C, difficulty D-. Map 10, the Lords. Oh boy. 
Get ready for the Lords, episode one's boss map. Talk about zero effort. You've got a prep room with a giant red arrow telling you where to go in case you're actually brain dead, and an ugly brown pit with lava, two mancubi, four barons of hell, and enough rockets to take them all out handily. That's the entire level. Hurrah for minimalism and all, but six monsters? Come on, Eric. The Lords is boring, ugly, and insubstantial. One of Scythe's worst. Grade F. Difficulty E. Map 11, Sneak Peek, in which Scythe bears its teeth. Just as in Map 6, Sneak Peek plays innocently enough except for one fight. Grabbing the blue key triggers a nasty ambush spearheaded by the Megawad's first archfile, but it can be declawed if you obtain the rocket launcher and missable megasphere. I think Sneak Peek is where Scythe starts to hit its stride. Players who mop the floor with the first 10 maps will have to actually start paying attention now. Grade B minus, difficulty D plus. Map 12, Walk in the Park. I have a hard time believing that Walk in the Park was titled ironically. As long as you give the demons their personal space and don't stand still, you're unlikely to be overwhelmed. The mancubus skulking around in this poison gully is a bit irritating, as are these chain gunners that apparate when you pick up keys, but once you find the rocket launcher, it's game over. I actually like the map's aesthetics. The gradient lighting, brownstone, and music are a nice alien vendetta send up, and it does well as an atmospheric insert in a wad that doesn't care much for atmosphere. Grade B, difficulty D. Map 13, subverted base. Yet another tan mini tech base. <sighs> you can mostly sleepwalk through this one, especially if you find the secret wall that takes you to the plasma gun. A few of these fights are neat. The teleport ambush when you go for the blue key and the trapped exit are good clean fun. This map would be great for deathmatch. There's plenty of room to move, but nowhere to hide. Even though it's a four minute level, subverted base kind of seems padded out. For instance, this blue door takes you right to the yellow skull key. What's the point? By the way, for those of you wondering at home, no, we still have not seen a super shotgun in this megawatt. Not that we've really needed it. Grade B minus, difficulty D. Map 14, power outage. Alien Vendetta reference, check. Helipad, check. Easily guessable gimmick hinted at in the title, check. Yep, it's a map from the early 2000s. To exit the level, you'll have to restore electricity to the base, so shoot your way through this dark warehouse, get a keycard, and turn on the generator in the shed out back. It's a simple thing, but I like how the lights are on when you come back inside. Unlike in Doom 2's refueling base, you will not open any secrets by shooting these UAC wall panels. Sad face. Power outage is breezy and clever, another solid map. Grade B. Difficulty D. Map 15. The inmost ends. I mean bloodbath. Without a doubt, this is Scythe's most noticeable uptick in challenge so far. You get an archfile in plain view right from the start. Hit scanners, revenants, and imps circling like vultures. No. God. Damned. Super. Shotgun. This probably isn't a unique opinion, but I hate it when mappers make you kill like two token revenants with a shotgun before giving you the super shotgun, as if you gotta prove yourself before they hand you the big boy equipment. Take that annoyance and multiply it by two, and that's how I feel about the first 15 maps of Scythe. Yes, there's a secret SSG in this map, but you probably won't get to fire it more than once. It's there more for single segment players than pistol starters. I'm doing a lot of moaning and groaning, but this map is actually really solid. The fights are exciting, the secrets are fair and fun to find, and the American McGee homage is done well enough to not be cloying. Make the strafe jump and you'll find the secret exit. Grade B, difficulty C+. Map 31, I don't know, Torn. I'm willing to overlook the fact that 90% of this map is just gray stone textures only because map author Kim Bach, aka Torn, is kind enough to give you a super shotgun right at the beginning of the map. This is the only level in the set not authored by Eric Alm, and it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's deliberate and secret heavy, with irreverently placed arch files and clunky combat. This red key imp ambush is fine, I guess, if only for the satisfying feedback that only super shotgunning a mob of imps can provide, but it's basically harmless, and like most of the visuals here, bland and homogeneous. Yeah, I guess I can't overlook it, this map just isn't pretty, though it does take a decent stab at lighting. Since it's a secret map by a guest author, I guess I'll give this map a pass, but I will say it gives off an energy that befits its title. Grade D, difficulty D+. Map 32. Eno's Soak. Chaos Zone backwards is Scythe even smaller. It boils down to two square arenas. Both will spam you with teleporting enemies which will infight without needing to be asked, and are fairly well stocked with health and ammo. The archvile fight is the best in the map in my opinion, but the part where you drop into a hallway with four hell knights, a megasphere, and a berserk is stupid. It's a bit too cramped to punch them all to death, but the auto switch to your fist also makes it hard to safely rocket or shotgun them. You can avoid landing on the berserk pack, but this is Scythe and I don't want to take my time. Best bet is to squeeze past them and lure them out. The final fray is a mosh pit of imps, pinkies, shotgunners, and hell knights. Give them all a plasma bath, get some distance, rocket the stragglers, and you're done. This map doesn't wow me. Grade C minus, difficulty C. Map 16, Burial Grounds. Kicking off the much more fondly remembered half of Scythe is Burial Grounds, whose cemetery setting is a good look for this megawad. Jump into a fresh grave to grab this non-secret super shotgun and go for the red key to set off my favorite fight in the level. A tense, archvile attack which you can take control of with a little infighting and some cover from the obelisk in the center. I'm not sure what it is about archviles that makes them fit so naturally into unholy church settings, but it really works here. I like Burial Grounds. It hits me in the same way a good plutonium map does. Grade B, difficulty C-. Map 17, Book Lords. 
a sharp and deadly demonic library level, Book Lords is one of the best maps in Scythe's second episode. It's detailed, thoughtfully lit, and finely calibrated, with a couple of barnstorming fights and a great midi selection. Alm's archfile placements keep things lively, thankfully you're armed with a super shotgun from the start, and the final battle for the blue key is a friendly but spirited challenge. Not much more to say. Book Lords is a model speed map. Grade B+. Difficulty C. Map 18. MS Futura. I know none of you asked, but here's the plot of this megawad. You are a space marine, yada yada. A time anomaly has been detected, and there seems to be demons traveling to Earth from the future. One. Your job is to travel to various places to find out where this time anomaly is, and then stop the demonic capital invasion. MS Futura sees the space marine yada yada ostensibly finding the time anomaly, a giant portal guarded by a spider mastermind whom you can make in fight with the Mancubi and Arachnotrons on the dock. In this playthrough I got her killed without firing a shot. MS Futura is the first of three interrelated maps that bridge the gap between the Earth and Hell levels. Next stop, the future. Grade C, difficulty D. Map 19, 3000 AD. This map's end screen just says AD, but if you read the text file you'll see it was supposed to say 3000 AD. Oh well. Probably the most conventional level in Scythe, 3000 AD is comparatively large and linear and pays a lot more attention to its aesthetic stylings than the vast majority of what we've seen so far. With an enemy count just south of 200, you'd expect it to be twice as hard as what's come before, but it's really no more challenging than your average Doom 2 map. Mowing down this flock of imps is good fun, as is this surprise archfile who shows up in the arena immediately after. Unfortunately, most of the other fights kind of blend together for me, and the spider mastermind at the end is, again, a total pushover. This level had more potential. Grade B, difficulty C. Map 20, the Starport. The coda to Alm's trifecta of futuristic maps, the starport gets the same marks as map 19 for visuals, but the action is pretty weak, at least in the first half. Get all the keys and you'll unlock the main arena, where you get to duke it out the old-fashioned way with the WAD's first cyberdemon. Also, you may have already noticed, this is where the intermission screenshot came from. After that, tear through an archfile and his garrison of imps and big imps, and the episode is over. Kind of a lackluster finale, but a heck of a lot better than the Lords. Grade C+, difficulty C. Map 21, Solitude. Welcome to hell. No, really. This is where Scythe stops messing around. Like Eric says in his text file, step down and skill if you die a lot here or in the following two maps. Solitude is home to mercifully few enemies, but you'll also notice a big drop in available ammo, so lean on Berserk every chance you get. With its heavy use of darkness, red, and resource starvation, I'm 99% sure that this map and the next one were prototypes for Scythe 2's 26th map, which is simply called Death. If you're wondering when Dean of Doom Scythe 2 is coming out, the answer is, I have yet to beat Death, even with saves. Anyway, if you make your shots count and don't take careless hits, Solitude isn't too bad. All in all, a good tone setter for the final episode. Grade B, difficulty C. Map 22, Despair. Aptly titled and sporting a fitting midi courtesy of TNT Evolution, Despair will do its damnedest to break your spirit. You'll get a super shotgun and berserk early on, but not a lot of real estate to tango with the demonic ensemble that awaits you. Finding the BFG behind this blunt fall will greatly alleviate the stress caused by this map's archviles and cyberdemon. Again, ammo is not plentiful, so don't be afraid to give in to the old roid rage once in a while. I also highly recommend saving a BFG shot for the last room, it'll make your life easier. Despair gives you that nice tingly feeling that things are about to get a lot tougher. To that, I say bring it on. Grade B, Difficulty B. Map 23, Anger. Want to see how quickly this level can kill you? Well, only if you don't know what you're doing. Anger is a pressure cooker right from the start. I wish the whole map was like this, a big chaotic scramble of enemies, looking for weapons, ducking arch files, and sprinting around like a lunatic. The energy sags a bit when you're forced to creep through these tunnels in search of the blue key. If the last level taught you the merits of hoarding cells, you'll be more than prepared for any tricks. I like this pair of cyber demons mainly because Alm gives you the freedom to force an infight between them and the next round of enemies. Anger is an artful display of aggression without excess, a balance that Scythe doesn't often strike as well as it does here. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Map 24, Hatred. Not to be confused with Requiem Map 23, Hatred is another very red hellscape full of segregated demon hordes. It's hard to know what to tackle first. With the Hell Knights, Imps, and Cyberdemon, everything seems primed for an infight party, but it's harder to get one going than it would appear, especially with these stupid sniping Mancubi who like to distract the Hell Knights and are a chore to take out. This Cyberdemon is a bother. He's dug in, very obstructive, and again, reluctant to infight. These packs of revenants are a welcome diversion, though probably the only part of the map I really enjoy. If you want to 100% the map, don't miss this unnecessarily obscure secret. Thanks, DoomWiki. Hatred doesn't do anything new visually, and it's more cumbersome than any of this episode's levels thus far. Grade C+, difficulty B+. Map 25, Envy. Not sure why it's called that, because this map is the envy of no one. It seems like an homage to Doom 2's map 25, Blood Falls. It uses the midi Adrian's Asleep. It's quick, forgettable, and boring, and it's... 
got blood falls. Everything boils down to one fight in a Nash pit against a few arachnotrons, two masterminds, and some cacodemons. Try using the tomatoes as meat shields and nuke the mama spiders with the BFG. If you want, you can actually leave the level right here by strafe jumping from the ledge. Of course, this isn't intended, but the rest of the level is so perfunctory and out of the way that it probably should have just ended right here. After enduring a blah cyber demon fight, two useless barons, and an archfile standing on the exit, the level's over. Envy is one of the weakest maps in the episode. Grade D+, difficulty C. Map 26, Fear. Fear starts with a deafening roar and never lets up. Grab the BFG, leap into the gorge, and go to town. This is like nothing you've seen so far. Swaths of Hell Knights, Revenants, Cacodemons, Barons, a platoon of 14 Cyberdemons, endless energy cell packs, 10 Megaspheres. This is where Scythe finally comes into its own. I usually dislike slaughter maps because they tend to be redundant and overlong, but the appeal of Fear is that it's essentially one gigantic fight that wraps up in 5 or 10 minutes. Alm gives you two invulnerabilities to help you out with the three trios of Cyberdemons guarding the keys, and the Pit Demons will do plenty of fighting in the meantime. As for the rest, you know what to do. Fear is one of the all-time classics, a jolt of adrenaline, and the purest distillation of action-packed fun that Scythe has to offer. Grade A. Difficulty B+. Map 27. Terror. I suppose this map earned its name for its abundance of monster closets, but it's no more terrifying than another Map 27, Monster Condo, from which it seems to be cribbing an awful lot visually. This is probably the most down-tempo level in Scythe, it's comparatively spacious and encounter-based, kind of like an extended remix of Book Lords with its thoughtful lighting, library theme, and similar monster composition. It's a nice change-up after Fear, and its ominous, hushed moments between fights remind me a lot more of this Wad's sequel. I will say that I don't appreciate being forced to eat a Blur Sphere right before a duel with three Cyber Demons that's cheap and low, and Eric Alm is better than that. But the rest of this map is definitely to my liking. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 28, run from it. If I don't finish this review in 30 seconds, I die, because according to Eric Alm, that constitutes fun. Take one step up these stairs and you'll start an off-screen countdown, which in a little under 30 seconds will start crushing a voodoo doll, consequently killing you. Don't ask how it works, there's no time. If you pick off some of the monsters in the first room before you start the race, you'll lower your chances of getting interrupted on your way to the blue key and its door switch. If you flub anything, bump into a wall, or fall at any point, it's game over. Just restart. Strafe around as much as possible, watch out for random pitfalls, ignore the monsters, fuck getting 100% kills, prepare a BFG and shoot it down the hall, dodge the spider, and I'm dead. <laughs> Map 29, Hell on Earth. This map rubs me the wrong way. It's like Doom 2's downtown, but snowy. It's even got an arrow on the ground, and I can't tell if that's a reference or if it's Alm's way of admitting that he couldn't be bothered to design his level well enough to point the player where he wanted them to go in a more organic fashion. Hell on Earth is boxy and slow, with rudimentary lighting, minimal detailing, clunky progression, and unusually heavy-handed combat. When the map wants to get your attention, it just chucks cyber demons at you and calls it a day, which is unbecoming of Alm's reputation as a master of Doom combat. The music, a midified Symphony X song, is my favorite part of this map, and I don't listen to Symphony X, so that's a problem. Sadly, Hell on Earth is kind of a buzzkill. I'm gonna have to give it a C- with a difficulty of A-. Map 30, Fire and Ice. Scythe's ultimate challenge is exponentially tougher than the rest of the episode, which is already exponentially tougher than the rest of the Megawad. It is absolutely crushing, and completely inaccessible to casual players on the Ultraviolence difficulty. We're talking 700 monsters, Cyberdemon turrets, hordes of revenants, pervasive archvile surveillance, and countless corners you won't want to turn, switches you don't want to hit, and doors you don't want to open before you come up with a good plan of attack for the entire level. All this set to my personal pick for the most depressing track ever used in a Doom level, Lee Jackson's You Suck. I started recording for this episode not knowing whether or not I'd be capable of completing this map. In the end, I managed to save scum my way through it twice, but it's still easily in the top three hardest levels I've completed for this channel. The flood of revenants and barons by the poison reservoir is something you just have to flee and pray for good infighting. Getting the yellow key can be disastrous if you're not prepared for archviles. The twisting path of the red key is clogged with mancubi and cyberdemon sentries, and another unholy glut of revenants and archviles is released when you grab it. Thankfully, you can snipe them from the safety of these windows. What makes Fire and Ice so much harder than a map like Fear is the lack of mobility and limited power-ups. For reference, on Hurt Me Plenty, this map gives you 9 Mega Spheres and 3 invulnerabilities, but on UV you get just 1 of each. If you're not a Doom diehard, or an actual masochist, I doubt you'll find much to like about Fire and Ice, but I can respect a Megawatt Ender with the stones to say f*** the Icon of Sin. Let's throw the player in a Crucible instead. Grade A-. minus. Difficulty X. So, Scythe is like the SAT test, but for Doom. If you can knock every level out of the park, you're in the top 1% of Doom players worldwide. 
That, and accounts for nothing in life outside of bragging rights. Scythe has a few issues that are hard to ignore. One, it has a sequel that effortlessly outclasses it. Two, its visuals, which the author admits were an afterthought, have not aged well. And three, let's face it, the majority of its maps are chaff. The final episode will scare away novices, but the first two will bore experienced players to tears, limiting its replay value and confusing its audience. I think Scythe is fine by classic Megawatt standards, but it's a tad overrated and should be considered a developmental set of maps for Eric Alm. My final grade is a C+. As for difficulty, it's really hard to grade a megawatt that starts out with four straight E's and ends on an X, but I think a C plus makes the most sense, dragged up by the final episode, which would have gotten an A or A plus by itself. Now for the Dean's List. Valedictorian, Map 26, Fear. Salutatorian, Map 23, Anger. Class President, Map 30, Fire and Ice, obviously. And the dunce cap goes to Map 28, Run From It. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the WAD down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments and let you know I've read them. This is Mount Payne 27 and I'll see you in the next episode of Dean of Doom.